Well, as we've been covering here, following Russell Brand's allegations of sexual assault, the comedian and commentator has been facing an onslaught of deplatforming and demonetization from various sites, including YouTube, the BBC, and Paramount+. Plus. Hmm. YouTube said in a statement to The Hill, quote, we have suspended monetization on Russell Brand's channel for violating our creator responsibility policy. If a creator's off-platform behavior harms our users, employees, or ecosystem, we take action to protect the community. The company added, this decision applies to all channels that may be owned or operated by Russell Brand. The Gray Zone's Max Blumenthal responded to this move by recalling a time his own outlet faced their version of deplatforming and discussed this situation with Brand himself. Max Blumenthal joins us now to discuss. Welcome, Max. Good to see you. One, one thing is clear about the Russell Brand affair. Whatever the merits of the allegations are, and it's trial by media that he is being targeted because he has become perhaps the most prolific critic of corporate media and as well as, as well as the war state in the Ukraine proxy war on the planet. Maybe he maybe he's second to Tucker Carlson, but he's clearly threatening some very powerful interests. And so he is being targeted in a coordinated fashion in the same way that he articulated somewhat ironically when he interviewed me. And it began through tabloid media in the UK. You could look at any newsstand in London the day the allegations hit. It was on the front page of every paper. The editors from The Guardian to The Sun to The Mirror, they were feeding off, feasting off this with libidinal satisfaction because they wanted to see him destroyed for what he had said about them. He had turned on Hollywood as well. So you saw all these prominent figures denouncing him. And he hadn't yet to receive due process. And as I expected, he was demonetized by YouTube, which is really the ultimate form of cancellation in our culture, because YouTube, which is owned by Google, is essentially the inner vortex of our digital commons, which are privatized, yet controlled from the outside by powerful interests, including the Department of Homeland Security, British intelligence, and so on. So this raises a larger issue. What terms did he violate? And YouTube says that he violated their rules for off-platform behavior, that you have to conduct yourself well off the platform. Well, if none of these allegations are confirmed and they haven't been, uh, they haven't been seen through in a court of law, then who is Google and a bunch of anonymous corporate functionaries to determine if someone is guilty of essentially felonies? They have possibly committed defamation and it, and at the same time, they're hosting the George W. Bush Library on their platform. They're hosting the Obama Foundation, which has 235,000 subscribers. Barack Obama and his administration raped Libya. That is a confirmed fact. They destabilized the most prosperous nation in Africa and caused a jihadist onslaught that has swept across the Sahel. Bar George W. Bush raped Iraq leading to the death of one million people, the rise of ISIS, the destabilization of that region. But they are welcome on YouTube's platform according to its guidelines governing off-platform behavior. So where are the standards here and who's setting him? It's the same institutions that are destroying large parts of the world that are setting these standards because the Obama Foundation, for example, is involved in determining what the disinformation and term policy and terms of service are on platforms like YouTube. So I take your point, Max, but I was talking about this uh, a little bit with a friend uh, yesterday, and they pointed out that there is a distinction between being allowed on the app, which Russell Brand is still allowed on the app, and being able to monetize uh, your work on the app, and whether or not a company like uh, Google or Uber or some other kind of ride share delivery service decides that as a matter of policy, it doesn't want someone who's been accused of rape or assault or some other crime operating their vehicles, let's say. Well, YouTube wants to have it both ways. They want one of their most popular content creators to remain on the platform so he continues to draw an audience to its platform. They can't do to him what they did to Alex Jones, where he was completely removed. Uh, and at the same time, they're demonetizing him, which means necessarily, and any content creator on YouTube knows this, that his videos will receive much less traffic. So this is still an act of cancellation, and it feeds, it, it flows directly into 
the discussion I was having with Russell Brand about how dissenters and anti-establishment, prominent anti-establishment voices are financially sanctioned inside the West for their political views, but they're never given due process. They're never given an explanation and they are never given the right to explain where they're right and where they're wrong. Now, the one time that we had to deal with a threat of a strike from YouTube and had something deleted without explanation, of course, was it was when we did a live stream at the Gray Zone about our report exposing a very famous British journalist named Paul Mason as a security state collaborator who is waging a campaign with security state intelligence operatives in the UK to attack the what he called the Corbynite left, the left of Jeremy Corbyn, another target of British tabloid media. No, I, and I, yeah, sorry, YouTube totally de deleted us and threatened us. So we have to question whether the state here is actually involved in the demonetization of Russell Brand. But more and more people are, are forced to rely on an entirely privatized system, whether it's GoFundMe or YouTube, in order to earn a living because they are content creators. That's the way that people are going to deliver, their audience wants to deliver them support. And if they are removed and demonetized from there, they're essentially financially sanctioned. I work with someone who's been removed, our managing editor at the Gray Zone, Wyatt Reed, from PayPal and Venmo for no reason other than that he was reporting from the Russian separatist side of the Ukrainian conflict. Uh, I, I have several colleagues in the media who've been removed from PayPal, Venmo, they're getting kicked off TikTok. And slowly you can see as they get removed from these platforms, it's becoming harder and harder for them to earn a living. And that is precisely the point. And the state can't be held accountable the same way it can through civil asset forfeiture because it's doing it from behind the scenes. We don't know who made the decision to uh, by YouTube or who, who prompted YouTube to make that decision. All we know is that it's incredibly coordinated. And we also should consider the fact that the Times of London that led this story has targeted so many dissidents over the years and that the Times of London is a favorite publication for the MI5, MI6 to plant material. So what I'm saying, Brianna, is that the state now has the convenience of removing people from being able to earn a living or from public view canceling them and so on without putting its fingerprints on it. Now, I'm not saying that's exactly what's happening with Russell I mean, Brand. We, we, I'm using his case to make yet. a larger point. Yeah. Well, well I mean, he's, he's not being demonetized for his content. His content supposedly adheres to YouTube's stated terms of service. I hadn't heard of this off-platform behavior. And YouTube has appointed itself the jury. It gets to be the jury because our digital commons are completely privatized. None of these charges have been adjudicated. He may be guilty. And here's another point worth considering. Let's say Russell Brand is totally guilty of everything. Let's say it's even worse than that. Let's say he's like Leatherface and he's throwing women on meat hooks <laughs> in a hell hole in some rural county in Texas. Millions and millions of people will still not believe that that is true because the media and specifically the Times of London and the Murdoch media has lied them into so many disastrous situations. They lied about Jeremy Corbyn, the labor leader, being an anti-Semite day in and day out. They lied the public into the Iraq war. They lied about uh, Muammar Gaddafi giving his troops Viagra. They lied about Syrian chemical attacks to trigger Western intervention there. They lie day in and day out. Charlotte Waste, the lead reporter on the Russell Brand story, destroyed the life of a beautician in England, falsely claiming she was destroying women's faces with rogue Botox treatments. Uh, it was they, when, when the Times of London was proven false, they still went to court and fought this poor woman's libel case anyway, tooth and nail. It destroyed her life. It destroyed her son's uh, mental fitness. And that's the Times of London. They went after so many dissidents that I know with front page stories in uh, over arcane themes that seem kind of irrelevant to the public, but which threatened the British intelligence services and British financial interests. And so the public will not believe anything about Russell Brand because of the way that the mainstream media has conducted itself. And that's what needs to be considered here. Mm -hmm. The well, mainstream media yeah. has indeed proven itself an enemy of the people. One of the major dividing lines in our political culture right now is whether you think Donald Trump is being targeted with a quasi weekly indictment because he threatened the quote unquote deep state or because he actually committed heinous crimes that no other president has ever been committed and that this is worse than Watergate. 
and and I would say that's what the election is going to be decided on. And so the Russell Brand case really fits into that dividing line in our political culture. Do you trust the system or not? And I would argue that most people do not trust the system, but the problem is in the U.S. they vote with their feet, which means they do not vote at all because they're so checked out of the system. So here's a case where powerful interests are obviously coming to YouTube to shut down someone who may have actually done horrible things, but they're doing it not because he did those horrible things. This is well known in Hollywood. He's written about it. Everyone knew about his antics. Russell Brand was never shy about it when he uh, attempted to rehabilitate himself. They're doing it because he threatened to, he's interfering with the objectives of this transatlantic establishment, which has destroyed countries across the world and who's and, and who and, and who the authors of that destruction are welcomed by those same institutions. David Frum is the toast of Democratic Part, Party uh, elite in Washington, D.C. He's the guy who wrote the notorious lie into George W. Bush's speech that Iraq was involved in an axis of evil with weapons of mass destruction. Um, it, 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 Dick Cheney is still free to walk around in public. This is a guy who made billions of dollars off an Iraq war that he managed from day one while possibly even outing a CIA operative, Valerie Plame, which should have been a crime. I mean, everybody sees it in the public that the people who are accused and the, are, and, and the people who are demonetized and financially censored or politically censored are the ones that threaten the interests of the worst criminals and propagators of disinformation in our society mm. who happen to be in control of the social media platforms. Well, we got to leave it there. Max Blumenthal, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks a lot.